you know, we've talked a little bit about diets. We've talked about intermittent fasting, uh, flexible dieting, we've talked right. about keto. What about what's good for me as a person inside? Because if I'm following whatever diet and I'm eating cookies and having a beer or whatever, effectively, I'm not putting the best things in. How, how bad is that in the long run affecting you? Right. Or should you not stress? Well, you don't want to stress yourself to a point that is going to be detrimental to your lifestyle. So you want to more than saying, I don't want to have this cookie because it's bad for me. Think of it in the long run of what is this cookie going to do for me? Maybe not today, maybe in two months when I'm looking in the mirror, I'm not, I'm not quite happy with what I look like. So the idea that certain food is bad and certain food is good, that's more of a broad stroke. That's more of a general terminology. If you're more understanding and more control based on what you want to be eating, I would say rather than focusing on what might be healthy or what might be unhealthy, create habits, create positive mm -hmm. habits. Positive habits would be, I'm not gonna restrict myself and say, if I wanna eat six cookies, I'll eat six cookies. But the next time I'm gonna have a cookie is gonna be two months from now. Mm -hmm. Or if I need to restrict for the rest of the weekend, I'm gonna be very meticulous and only eat certain mac macronutrient ratios like we spoke about, which would be if my sugar is very high, rather than saying, you know what, I just ruined the day I'm also ruin the weekend. That's not the idea that's, that I want you to do. That's something in. I used to do, and now I'm more on the. I'd rather have a cookie a day right. than be like, oh man, I had two cookies, so I guess it's okay to have two cookies and some beers. We should just get burgers. Let's just order wings. Now that it's not good, right. I guess let's just get more pizza. Right. Let's just see if we can go to the hospital. We should go to the neighbor's house right? like and that, see if they have anything sweet. Yeah. Like if they have like happens. some cake frosting, I'll suck but it right I, out of the tube. But I've done it though. Like I've legit opened the pantry and be like, all right, well, I already had three pieces of pizza. I'm just going to keep going right. because death. That's interesting. Right? That's interesting because I use that analogy with clients all the time. So if you think about it in terms of if you're driving somewhere and you know where you have to go, but if you get lost, do you try your best to get back on that road? Or you just say, you know what? I'm lost. I'm going to go to Jersey. I might never come home. <laughs> this, yeah. this might be the end of it right here. I'm just going to drive until I burn. Yeah. That's not how you should be approaching anything, especially with your eating. If I talk to someone on Thursday and then I talk to them again on Monday, they say, you know what? This weekend was bad. How did you have a bad weekend as opposed to, all right, Los, if you want to eat bad, Friday, make it a meal. Say, you know what, I'm gonna have whatever I want. Wife likes this, I like this, kids, boom, 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 sugar, whatever you want. But as long as Saturday and Sunday, you have some semblance of a routine, you have at least an idea of what you wanna get back to, you can come back from that. That's part of moderation. That's part of having a lifestyle, but not being so meticulous that you can't splurge every now and then. If you come to me and say, oh, Adam, this weekend was bad, my question will be, where was it that you felt your least strong? Was it when you had the first bad meal per se? Or was it the other 48 hours where you went on a free for all and tried to give yourself diabetes? Yeah, now, now I switch out to, I have two cheat meals a week. Right. But like, I don't care. If I wanna have two beers or three, I will. If right. I wanna have, that's where I'll be like, I'm gonna get a burger and I am gonna get a dessert, but I'm out. Right. And like that's, that's right. what's happening the next meal. We're, we're good and normally with with how I eat right I try to go okay and I'm gonna have this by seven because then I'm gonna fast a few extra hours even well. more even more so of a contingency plan yeah, if yeah. you're gonna decide to fast because then you're not taking in any calories mm -hmm. then you can't say should I eat healthy food or should I eat bad food like, no I can eat no food after this time so that's even stronger of a barrier that's more of a fail-safe for when you say I'm going to have a cheat meal a lot of people will even have their cheat meal on a day where they're only having one meal. Where if I eat this basket of whatever, you you name it, pizza. I'm from New York, I eat pizza all day. But if you decide to eat terribly for one meal, the rest of your, your day is going to consist of three hours worth of eating and then you're turned off. I do that and, and tell me what the good and bad is of this because sometimes I will go, let's say Saturday, I will prolong my eating and say like, we're gonna go out and do something. Mm -hmm. So I'll say, all right, well, I know I'm going out with the girls, we're gonna eat. Uh, Laura likes to have like, a glass of wine because she never gets to on the weekdays right. we're always with mm -hmm. kids and stuff like that. So I'll say, all right, let's go. And I, I'm probably gonna get 1800 calories in, in a city, right. feel uncomfortable, but happy, right. Right? right? And then I know I go home 
and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna get an optimum shake. I'm gonna have a shake and I'm out. And right. it's 5 p.m., good. Right. Like, sometimes, mentally, I feel uncomfortable because I'm like, man, I didn't get good. I just had a big cheat. I didn't get like more protein. And so sometimes I try to go, all right, well, I'll have a shake at five and then I'll have another pure protein shake at right. six. Right. Does it even matter? Because I kind of feel like at the end of the day, it kind of doesn't as long as you can fix yourself and start your fast. It really doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter in the way that that day is not lost yeah. because you decided to eat stuff that was out of the norm or that was considered to be bad food. It's just an excess of calories. Yeah, your day is not lost. Now you're in a caloric surplus for that day. What you can do for the rest of the week is progressively remove a little bit of calories from here, a little bit of calories from there, and that cheat meal, so to speak, might even put you in a caloric deficit for a whole week. Or conversely, right, you could know that you're gonna have a Tuesday or Saturday cheat meal, whatever the case may be, and have that caloric deficit and almost use it as a refeed. Day. Exactly, exactly, right. right. And, and it's funny that you, you, you bring up refeeds because that's something that we hear most often attributed to low carbohydrates, where if you are very low carbohydrate, your body is gonna be deficient in glucose, but specifically, you're not gonna adhere to the same rules, so to speak, of how sugar works. So sugar is what gives us energy. Sugar is in anything that you can imagine, whether it's fructose like those bananas, or it's in simple sugar like those cookies, that is in turn used in the body as energy. The more simple the form of the sugar, the more readily available it is to become glucose. So if you take in, let's say a bunch of cookies, your body's gonna use that. If you take in, let's say a crate or a pallet worth of cookies, your body's gonna say, hey, this is too much glucose, I don't know what to do here. That in turn is how you create body fat. So when you are deprived of said glucose, you haven't had any sugar in a few days, let's say a week. I like to wait about five to six days before I refeed and I have a higher amount of carbohydrates. At that point, I feel I've adequately drained whatever carbohydrates I may have lingering in my love handle, in my butt cheek, in my liver for the week, and I feel comfortable enough to refill or refuel and refeed that amount of glucose, that amount of carbohydrates into my system. When you say low carb, where do you stand on that? That's, that's another subjective uh, point there. That's, that's gonna be a floating scale of what's low. That's just like when I tell people weight is relative. Yeah. Strong people lift heavy weights and it's relative to their body size. My opinion on low carbohydrate might be different. It may differ from a lot of people's opinion. I can function on about 30 grams of overall carbohydrates and that's including things like chewing gum, things like low carb energy drinks to try to sneak carbs in there, maybe one or two in there. Operating on those numbers, I'm still comfortable. I hear people saying if I go under 200, I feel sluggish, I feel tired. It's aggressive. Right, right. If, your body, if your body is that carbohydrate adapted and if you are that insulin sensitive or lack of insulin sensitivity, then, you're, then you've progressed further than I have with my abilities. So certain people's bodies are gonna adhere differently. If you've heard of the somal types, which would be the three different types of bodies, people adhere to different diets to fall into those. And for those that don't know what somal types are, you would have the low end of the spectrum, which would be your endomorphic people. They have generally a lower metabolism, slower metabolism, that carbohydrates is just not the way that they properly uh, function. And excess carbohydrate is gonna be very quickly stored as body fat. In the middle, we have natural athletes like LeBron James that could eat cookies and grapes and pizza and things that are as, as simple carbs as you could think of and never gain a pound, but also retain muscle. Then the far end of the spectrum, which would be ectomorphs. Those are people that are what we call hard gainers. People that they have a runner's body, even though they squat and bench more than you do, their body just does not adhere, that does not change. So there's always gonna be room in between. There's gonna be relative numbers for everyone. Myself as a pure endomorph, I could look at a rain puddle and gain five pounds. So I try my best to avoid excess amounts of carbohydrates. But again, like I said, I'm from New York, so I don't know how to react when I see pizza. <laughs> Oftentimes I just remove all of my clothing and rub marinara sauce all over me. So it's, it's hard to say happen. anything can happen. Yeah. It, we call that Wednesday where I come from. <laughs> Love it. <laughs>